Hey, what's up? Bum Gia, Bum Gia. <laughs> Good day to you. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to, uh, as always, give you a little bit of food for thought. You know, it's a lot of good reasons to be grateful. <laughs> you know, I, I am um, returning to an old job of mine. That's right. It's a job that I enjoy. I feel very privileged to be able to work at the airport. And uh, one of the beautiful things is is arriving at sunrise and seeing the view of the sunrise over the airport you know the skyline you know it's beautiful early in the morning um, when I arrive at 4 a.m. 4.30 a.m. You know, I see the blue lights and the, the moonlight and, you know, it's it's a good grand entry to a day. So I really enjoy the smooth ride in the morning. Not any traffic because traffic stresses me out. So what I like to listen to is content similar to this, you know, food for thought food that's good for the soul right you know you know some people like to begin the day with high vibration you know or low vibration I probably should say you know what I mean where where it's like the war drum the rap music the you know and hey to each his own you know, I'm not here to throw shade on any person's preference. What I am trying to say is, is that for those of us who like more of a mellow, smooth, you know, entry into the day, this is what this content is for. Or even at night, you know, you want to. Put something on with a little bit of music in the background and some thoughts that cause you to go deep, making life more of a high dimensional or high definition experience. You know, and that's what I'm trying to do. You know, I personally believe that the more we explore the word of God and the world of God. The more fulfilling life is Because ultimately we Will be Fulfilling our purpose Which is to create a body of work That will supersede Our body here at work This knowledge Keeps us from living A fruitless Existence At least that's the prayer right? That's the goal, that's the aim to multiply and be fruitful And so this is our connection To our root And our offspring <laughs> The bright and morning The spirit, the bride The bronze and the white You know When I say I like to explore The word of God I Ultimately mean the biblical scriptures But I don't mean it in a religious perspective I actually read the scriptures From a scholar's perspective With my ancestors in mind Which are both of Africa And of America And of the English So it's kind of a trinity You know Three bloodlines Intermixed into one And in essence this is what My previous lesson was About The father Of 
Christ is the Egyptian, the spirit, the root. The root is the Nile River. Right? This is where you will go if you're coming from Assyria down through the Mediterranean into the Nile River Delta, down into Egypt, Havila, Kush, Punt. This is the Nile River Valley. On the both sides of this river, the papyrus plant grows. And along the river, fig trees grew. So fig tree represented fig, the tree of knowledge, to figure this out, right? The knowledge of your past, your roots, your ancestry, which leads you to your divine, to the Adam and Eve, to the first man and woman of your lineage that ultimately leads to your source of life. God, the creator of your body that regenerates and combines generation after generation. That is eternal life. And so now the baton is up to you to pass it to your offspring, which is the tree of life. And that is the papyrus, which bears its fruit that each month creates monthly residual income. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation so that there shall be no more curse. So the cure for the fig leaves, if you Google it, the, the various different uses of the papyrus plant, if you Google it, most famous, it was used to make paper, papyrus, which money is made from this contract is made from this the law the scriptures land rights bill of rights constitutions institutions were created just from the innovation of the papyrus plant which also is used to make reeds and rafts rope And many other uses, just like hemp. But this process of turning this plant into a product created jobs. It created an economy for those in the Nile River. But there came a time in history where the Invaders ultimately took over this territory and compromised the integrity of the people as a means of war, a method of acquiring the resources, the gold, the land, the people, the livestock, the rare risens and minerals. Such as Bedillium and Onyx Stone, Genesis 2 10. So, what does this all have to do with reality? Well, in reality, we have two different parallel worlds that we interact with on an everyday basis, one of which is nature everything that we see that we know definitively because of its origins from the seed implanted into the earth <laughs> and we can see the trees we can see the flowers we can see the animal that God has made we see the deer the jackal the fox the owl and we see the pigmentation is an adaptation to the habitat <laughs> you know and so we were made in this way because this was our natural habitat the people the tropical people
Now, these original nations have been conquered. Whether that is right or wrong, that's far over my pay grade. What I am here to discuss is what is, so that we know how to navigate in this reality. See what I'm saying? So it's like to be able to tell the difference between the ram, the mufflin, the animal which God has made, and the sheep, which man has formed. You see what I'm saying? In the Bible, it said the Lord God formed man of the dust. He put the man whom he had formed in the garden. And the third time the form was used was in Genesis 219 when the Lord God formed the beast of the field and in this verse is when Adam is named for the first time and then his name is used six times afterwards to make sure that you know poetically that this is done on purpose with purpose because Adam is among the domesticated creatures just like the sheep the oxen the pig was domesticated from the boar. The dog is domesticated from the wolf, right? The sheep domesticated from the mufflin. Well, man, kind, like Adam, Adam originally was in Kemet science or Kemetic science in Kush. Atom was the god of creation who formed mankind through uttering the seeds of life <laughs> or semen of life onto the earth and formed from its minerals our embodiment but atom was reduced to a field labor and kept from knowledge <laughs> of his lineage of his ancestry of himself because knowledge would lead to everlasting life, meaning a successful lineage going forward from him. And this is what the Lord ultimately cursed, which and also what is se what separated the Lord from God is that the intentions of the Lord was not pure in the Garden of Eden. And this is the reason why you see. In chapter 4 and beyond the Lord operating on his own and fulfilling what he said he was going to do in the curse which was create anonymity between the man and the woman between her seed and his seed he shall bruise her head and she shall bruise his heel right but it was put in a way where people don't understand many people thinking that is a snake but snakes don't have a heel right <laughs> Snakes don't bruise heads They constrict They bite They even spit venom But they don't bruise heads They don't have heels And their seed Cannot intermix with the seed of a woman Right? Because they lay eggs So The three attributes Is proving that it's not An actual snake But the serpent goddess Wajet that was used to adorn the crown chakras of the pharaohs and high priests of the Kemetic and Kushite cultures called the Uraeus. And she was the Eye of Ra or the divine feminine counterpart to the sun god. And she is the center of of his mind frame because she is the bearer of the sun or life the next generation and this is the reason why in the belly of the snake on top of Ra the sun god you see is the sun in a circle which means a cycle which brings forth life through the mouth of a serpent which looks like the womb the gateway to life that which C goes in goes through a cycle like the sun and then returns or regurgitated. For more, 